Who's been blessed today so far? Yeah, me too. It's been good. I enjoy praising the Lord and worshipping the Lord. Now, God has given me a word today that we're going to start off by acknowledging what we think about our Bible first, okay? So say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, ever-living Word of God into my life. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. I haven't put it up in everybody's language, but that's in Romanian for those of you who don't recognize it. Hallelujah. God has given me a word today, and it's still on the word celebrating, because he started off this word this year by saying, this is a year for us as a church to celebrate. Amen. I don't know about you, but I like celebrating. We celebrated our, our 40th wedding anniversary last month, and then later on in this year, we're going to celebrate my birthday, my 70th birthday, and we're going to celebrate the church's 30th birthday. It's a time to celebrate. So, we're going to keep on celebrating, in Jesus' name. And I want us to celebrate today some of the blessings that God has, just some of them, because it would take, like, forever, literally, to talk about all the blessings God's got for us. But we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Oh, he is awesome. Now if you like what we're saying today, if you like the scriptures, if you like what's written down, let your voice and your face know, and so you can be happy about it. Let's celebrate this word today. This says, let's bless God. And we're, we, this puts us in a unique place actually, as a group of people, if you believe this first. Because not everybody in this world believes that God is the Father of Jesus Christ. Not everybody in this world believes that God's even got a son. This puts us in a special group of people. We believe in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. That makes us in a very, quite a big group. Not a small group, a big group, but we're in that unique group. A lot of people don't believe that stuff. And so we are there. And he said, he wants us to do, he's done this for us. He's already blessed us. Father has already blessed us. How many blessings has he blessed us with? Every blessing. Every blessing that's possible for him to bless us with, he has blessed us with. And where are these blessings? They're in heavenly places in Christ. That's where they come from. So they can't be affected by you, they can't be affected by me, they can't be affected by the devil, they can't be affected by anybody else around. These promises are from heaven. They're, 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 they're unaffectable, you can't, nobody can change them. These promises are ours. And the heavenly places, you get this, in Christ. If you're in Christ, these are yours already. He has, we're blessing him, we're saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's blessed me, say this with me, he has blessed me with every blessing, hidden away in heaven, so nobody can touch it until I need it. That's what it is. These blessings are sat in heaven waiting. The instant, well, they're already provided for you. They're yours already. But as soon as you need them, they're yours. And nobody can stop them working in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Nobody can stop them working. So God, and then it says, how do you qualify for these blessings? You just have to be in Christ. That's it, so sorted. Those last two words in that verse, in Christ, means it's sorted, these blessings are yours. Amen, I like that. And then he goes on and explains it. In the very next verse he says, just as he chose us, in the old King James, he says, according as he has chosen us. In other words, he's saying, let me explain how this happened and why it happened. 
just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let me tell you how and when this all started. This all started by God making a decision, and he did it before he made the world. He did it before he made the world. Before he made the world, he chose you to be in Christ Jesus and to be holy. Now if God did this before the foundation of the world, sin began after the foundation of the world, yeah? So you were made holy by God before sin ever existed. So you can't commit a sin that will stop this working. It's already been dealt with. This was sorted out. You were placed and made holy before God, before this even started. You are a holy person. I was glad to hear that my sins and the sins of others that had sinned against me could not stop my father choosing me to be part of his kingdom and to be his son, to be his child. I'm glad that nobody, not even me, I can't even stop that happening. God has chosen me to be a blessed person. I have been made holy enough to be in his presence. And these people say, oh yeah, he's a holy God. So am I. I am as holy as he is. You are as holy as he is. Because he made you holy with his holiness. There's only one kind of holiness around here and it comes from God the Father. And he's made you holy. He's declared you so holy that you can just stroll straight into the throne room anytime you like and speak to God Almighty without an appointment, without checking that you're okay. Am I okay? Oh, please, I hope he talks to me today. I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you're, you're about to go and talk to somebody. I remember when I was at... Um, where was I? Borden in Hampshire, uh, doing a, an artificer training thing with the army. And we'd done all our training stuff, and we were about to go and get our results and find out whether we, we, we were going to be accepted or not. And it was a little bit intimidating, and it was, it was designed to be intimidating. You were told that you could go into this corridor, there's a chair, there's a, there's a yellow line, like an oki for the, for the dart, there's a yellow line and there's a chair just behind it. You can sit in the chair or you can stand behind the chair. You cannot go over the other line and get any closer to that door. They don't want you hearing what they're saying to the previous person. And that's a bit intimidating. God's not like that. God's not like that. You can come in any time you like. The door's always open. God's door is always open to his believers. Because he's made you holy enough to walk straight into his presence any time you like. I like that. I like that. And then, having done that, it says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Before time began... Father God saw ahead, because he's outside of time, he saw ahead and saw you receive Jesus. He saw that happen. He went, right, let's predestine that one to be one of my kids. He predestined you to be ab adopted as a child through Jesus Christ. Before time even began, you were chosen by Father God to be one of his kids. I like that. So who can stop it happening? Nobody. If it's been decided before the world began, if it's been decided before sin ever existed on this world, nothing can stop you being his child, not even sin. Yeah, he's not, you know, like your own children, you're not too happy when they do horrible things and, and bad things, but it doesn't stop them being your child. You know, you see sometimes in stories and in films where the, the son does something that the father doesn't approve of, usually because the father's all legalistic, and the son does something the father doesn't approve of, and he says, right, you're no longer my son. That's not true. He might not treat him as his son anymore, but you can't stop somebody who's your child from being your child. Nothing can stop you being a child of God. Because you made a decision one day, 
and receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. Hallelujah. That's because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus, this is made possible through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Do you know, God is happy to have you as his child. He likes you. He likes you personally being in his kingdom. He likes you being, you please him. You please him. Whenever you talk to him, whenever you read his word, whenever you fellowship with other Christians, you please him. And you know, even if you're operating in sin at the time, you still please him. He's not pleased with your actions, but you please him, because you're one of his children. He would rather you didn't do that, but he won't stop him being pleased by you. You just walk into his throne room, see what he thinks of you. No Christian has ever walked into the throne room of God and God said, I'm not having you here. You sinned yesterday. Who do you think you are? Nobody's ever had that happen to them because God receives everybody. Hallelujah. Then it says in verse 6, To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the Beloved. We give him all the glory because of the grace that's been given to us, the, the grace that made you acceptable in Jesus. You are already accepted as a child of God, as a member of the kingdom of God, as a citizen of heaven. You're already accepted. Nothing can change it. This has already happened. You are a child of God. You are a citizen of heaven. What a blessing. And he says, to the praise of the glory of his grace. He's got so much grace, it's absolutely amazing. Then he says, the grace which you made to abound. No, wrong one. He, he, we have redemption through his blood. We have redemption through the, the blood of Jesus. The forgiveness of our sins. According to the riches of his grace. His grace again. His grace is amazing. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. No wonder Isaac Newton wrote that. Amazing grace. A former slave ship captain singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound in a believer's ear. The amazing grace of God. And he has forgiven us. We are redeemed. Do you know what redeemed means? You've been purchased. You were bought with a price, and the price was the blood of Jesus Christ. If you ever decide you need a bit of money in this country, I don't know about other countries, but in this country, you can take your, your money to a, a, a pawnbroker, and you give it your, your money, your goods to a pawnbroker, like a, a, wa a watch or a, a bracelet or something, and he will say, oh, this is so much value, I will lend you £100 on that. Yeah? So you take the hundred pounds and then when you want the watch back or the bracelet back, you go back to the pawnbroker and he'll want some extra money as well for his commission, but you have to buy it back. That's called redeeming it. Redeeming it. Do you know redeeming means getting it back to the right owner. When you were redeemed by Jesus' blood, you were brought back to the right owner, Father God. He has bought us with a price. <clears throat> and because this is one of the reasons why, why uh, Christians can't have too much trouble with the devil. Because he's already been defeated. You can't be possessed by the devil. A Christian cannot be possessed by the devil. You can be oppressed and pushed down and put into all sorts of states. But you can't be possessed because possession implies ownership. And you are owned by God. He bought you with the, with the blood of Jesus. You are redeemed. And your sins are as if they'd never happened in Jesus' name. And then this grace in verse 8, which you made abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Abound. God is a more than enough God. He is more than enough in every area that we need. And our, his grace is more than enough. And it's the grace to receive and understand and walk in his wisdom and prudence. 
And that prudence, the Greek word there originally means to know and have a holy love for God's will. To know and have a holy love for God's will. So what, you will want to know God, what God's will is all the time. Because you love it and you want it in your life because he loves you and you're part of his kingdom. And it says, having made known to us the mystery of his will. You mean he's already told us what his will is? Yes, he has, and he wrote it in the Bible. This will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. He's told us what his will is for us. Blessings in abundance. Blessings stuffed away in heavenly places so no one can fiddle about with or break them or stop them ready to be poured out on any time you need you you need them he has told us what his will is and it pleases the father again it talks about God being pleased it pleases him you're part of his family he thinks you're great we think we as the pastors of the church we are pleased that you're part of this family we think it's great that you are here today because you're part of this family and we appreciate we are we pray that you appreciate the love that's here for one another. That we know one another as part of the kingdom of God. We know one another has God as our Father. I love it. And we love you and pray for you as if we would one of our own children. <clears throat> then in chapter 10, verse 10 rather, it says, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. A time is going to come, and I don't think it's going to be very far away, when all the believers will be gathered together. The ones in heaven and the ones still on earth will all be gathered together. God wants us to be together. But you know, we can start that process off now. We can start that together process off now. By getting to know one another. In the church, getting to know one another a bit more than perhaps we do. Because in John 13, 35, it says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. It's talking about our love for one another being visible. By this shall all men know. They will see you having love for one another. How many people do you know in this room today? And how many people of the others that aren't here today because they're away? Do you know? Do you know everybody's name? How many people have you not spoken to recently? What could you do? What could you do personally about making your love for the other people here more visible? What could you do? Because it's a physical thing. It has to be physical. If other people can see it, if it said, by all this all men shall know that they hear you being. No, they'll see it. All men shall see that you are my disciples. We have to have love for one another and make it so visible people can't miss it. And they want to know why you're so kind and nice to each other and the rest of the world couldn't care less. That's what brought me into the kingdom of God. I walked into a house one night and I suddenly realised my other neighbours the other side, it wouldn't have bothered them too much if I died that night. They would have gone, oh that's a shame. But never mind, he's dead whatever. These people who introduced me to God, introduced me to Jesus, were concerned about my eternal salvation. Now that to me was love. They were so concerned about me making sure I got salvation in the end, they were prepared to put me in a place where I might reject them. To put me in a place where I might think, I don't want to know them, horrible people talking about this weird Jesus person. And that's what I thought as I walked to their house. But I went and I received Jesus anyway. Because he had been planned and sorted and organised for that night. And it was wonderful. But you see, they had love for me and they demonstrated it. And it brought other key people into the kingdom as a result of it. So let's see what we can do by making this togetherness that we just talked about in verse 10. This togetherness more visible. Let people see that you love one another. And then it says in verse 11 of Ephesians 1, In him also 
we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. In Jesus you have already, not going to get, not will get, not in the future, you have already obtained an inheritance. A guy who died quite a few years ago now, a Christian man we knew, called Harry Greenwood, he said God was so concerned that you would get all the blessings he had for you, he put them all in Jesus. Then when you get Jesus, you get them all. Amen. That's what Harry said, and I still believe that's a real true statement. God put everything in Jesus. When you receive Jesus, it's all yours. All these blessings are yours. You have inherited God's blessings in your life. Predestinated to be part of his will. Predestinated to be in the place where God's will is being done in your life. You can let that happen. You can fulfill his will, his will in you. So that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. He wants everyone who trusts in him as their saviour to praise him and glorify him in our daily lives, doing things that would give glory and praise to him. He wants us to be in that place because we trusted him right from the beginning. From the moment we trusted in him, he wants us to be doing that. Because we want to bless him. Because he's blessed us so much. Then it says, In him also you trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. So in Jesus, in Christ, something else happened. Something you may not have known about. First you trusted, then you heard the word of God, then you received the word of salvation, then you believed, now you're sealed. Now you are sealed. The Holy Spirit is the seal of your salvation. I don't know if anybody still uses them now, but when I was in the army, when, when we repaired a radio, we had to screw up all the, the cover up with special screws with little cups behind the screws. And so there was a tiny little gap in between the screw and the cup. And we used to push an anti-tamper cap in there and tap it in. You couldn't undo that screw without destroying the anti-tamper cap. Couldn't, you couldn't get into it. You couldn't, couldn't affect it, do anything with it at all. The Holy Spirit is our anti-tamper thing. Nobody can get into your life and mess with you unless you let him. The devil can't get in there and affect your life unless you let him in. You have to open the door and let him in. If you're in there and you're having problems in your lives, just tell the devil you don't want anything to do with what he's doing and say, Jesus, what's, what have I done? Why am I, why am I letting the devil affect me now? And talk to God and he'll tell you what the problem is. If you're dealing with sickness and disease, I don't know the answer all the time, but I do know that Jesus knows the answer. And I know that if, you've, if you're sick a lot of the time, there will be a reason for it. There will be a reason. There has to be a reason. Jesus has borne our sicknesses, carried our diseases, and by his stripes you were healed. If you were healed, you're well now. And if your experience is, well, that's not my experience, I'm not feeling well now. Well, talk to Jesus and ask him to tell you what it is that you can do to make it right, to put it in the right place so that you're still, you're, this seal is working in your life. The sickness and disease aren't getting in. The lack isn't getting in. If you're, not, if you're not being blessed financially, everybody knows the answer to that. Everybody know what the answer is if you're not being blessed financially? Make sure you're tied, make sure you're so. If you're not doing it, there's your answer. That you're not getting it. In Jesus' name. The same Holy Spirit who was promised brings the promise. That same Holy Spirit who was promised from way back now brings the promises. And he brings them into your life and nobody can take them out again because you are sealed in Jesus' name. And I don't know about you, but I've, I've prayed about it a lot and I've done a lot of study in the world of Word of God. And this is my personal belief and I believe it's from the Bible. Once saved, 
always saved. Amen. You can't get out. If you ever really did give your life to Jesus Christ, I don't care how much you're sinning nowadays, you're still saved. Amen. You might not be experiencing any of the blessings from God because you're doing things your own way. You might not be getting any of these blessings. You might think, what's he talking about? I've never experienced any of these. Then get back in the will of God and start doing what he wants you to do and you'll receive these Amen. in Jesus' name. Because these that be the Spirit, it says, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the glory of God. Until we actually leave here and go on to be with heaven, when we don't need any protection anymore, no, no hassle from the devil anymore, until we're redeemed out of the earth into heaven, He's the guarantee we've got this inheritance. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee. I don't know about you, but I've, I've, I've purchased things online before now. I bought things, say, from eBay, and I get a thing saying that I can go and collect it now. And I take my phone, because I get a message from my phone, and all I do is I just press the button and I show the man behind the counter my phone number and he goes, oh, he types the number in and he just gives it to me. Just gives it to me. No money exchanged hand. No money exchanged hands at all. Sometimes I can buy something on eBay and pick it up in, in, in uh, uh, Argos in the same way. I go in there, I show him my phone and he takes the number down and he just gives it to me. Why does he just give it to me? It's already been redeemed. It's already been purchased. I'm just showing him the proof. The Holy Spirit is the proof that you've been redeemed, that you've been saved. He is the absolute proof and guarantee and the seal on it all. There's nothing anybody can do about it. When you give your life to Jesus, that's it. Born again, spirit filled, word believing, faith talking, armor wearing, child of the King. And I know that Satan gets so worried when he sees the word working in you. He sees the word working in you and he gets so bothered by it. That doesn't matter. I don't care. I actually quite like it when he gets upset. Because I think, well, about time. Because you made enough other people upset. So we're going to believe God and trust in him. Until that day Jesus returns and takes us to himself. Everyone who's made Jesus Christ the Lord of their lives has been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to give him some praise. And that's why I love being able to pray in tongues. Some of us were praying in tongues earlier as we were worshipping and as we were praying for people earlier. When I pray in tongues through the Holy Spirit, it reminds me of my redemption. It reminds me that I am sealed by that same Holy Spirit and cannot be unsealed. It's the kind of seal that you just can't change. It's, it's in, unalterable. Can't be moved. Amen. You are sealed as a child of God with an inheritance, with a blessing that is yours already. You just need to receive it. And if you find you're not receiving these things in your life, then go to the Holy Spirit and say, why am I not receiving these things? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I've been in positions before now where, in fact, I'll tell you what, we, we have recently taken possession, I like that word, taken possession of the end of our garden. <clears throat> it wasn't ours before. It didn't belong to anybody. It was just a piece of land. But we had enclosed it for more than 12 years. And we had proof of that. So I sent the form off. And I sent the form off to the, to the land registry. We signed it all, got all the details. They sent it back to us and said, you used the wrong form. Well, so it took me a while to get organised again, but we sent off the right form this time. We sent the right form off, and they sent back a proof of purchase kind of thing. That bit of land now belongs to us. This form, this piece of paper in here, is your proof of purchase. This proves, the Bible proves, you were bought by God through the blood of Jesus Christ. It proves you are a child of God. It proves you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And it proves that all these blessings that are sat in heaven waiting for you to ask for them are all yours now. You don't have to pray for them. You don't have to fast for them. They are yours now. And when you need them, they'll just arrive. 
You don't have to do anything about them because they're already yours and they're marked with your name on. So give him some praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. 